There are multiple ways to interpolate in ArcGIS, multiple interpolation methods. These include inverse distance weighted methods. This is IDW, normally to the power of 2. You have spline interpolation and spline with barriers. You have Tobit raster, which doesn't require points, but can actually utilize contours or polylines, all kinds of different interpolation methods. How do you find these? You have to go to the spatial analyst tools in ArcMap. If this is not activated or you can't use the tools, you have to activate your toolbar. So you'll have to go to customize and go to extensions and then Depending on the license that you have, you'll have to actually activate your special analyst. It is activated here, and that means that I can use these tools. So back to my toolbox. So I have my special analyst tools, and then inside of my interpolation subset toolbox, I have the various interpolation methods I can use. So here we have IDW, spline that I mentioned, spline with barriers, topo to rest as well. We have a Krieging interpolation method. Now this is a geostatistical method. It requires a little bit more knowledge. And then we also have natural neighbor. Now f in this example, we will be using elevation points to interpolate to a surface. And we'll also be using contour lines, so polylines, to interpolate to a surface. Now, the information or the data I have here are my relief points or my relief iso heights. So my lines of constant value, in this case, meaning elevation. And these have been projected to Hartebius Hook. LO27 latitude or uh, longitude of origin 27. If you want to have a zoomed in view of this, simply zoom to layer. Alright. Now there are various interpolation methods. One is IDW, inverse distance weighted. So I use my point features for this. I must specify my z-value field in GIS. The elevation value or the height value is normally indicated um, with a z. Here it is in height value. You of course must give your um, output layer a logical name. And you're also given this output cell size. Now this is now in meters, meter by meter, so the dimensions of the cell. You hadn't projected your raster to a planar projection, this would be given in degrees, which is often not intuitive, and that is why you have to actually interpolate your layer to a planar projection. Now the power here is to 2. You can specify the number of points that you want to use in your interpolation method. You can inc also include barrier lines. In this case, we're not going to use those. And you run it. What this is going to create, it's going to create a raster surface, which is going to take up this space in my view and that will include continuous surface of elevation points based on my input relief points that I had there. So that is IDW. You can also use other methods, for example, natural neighbor. Again, you use your points, the point features for this. You must specify the height or the elevation value that you're going to be using. Output cell size is the same. This algorithm is slightly different. It uses the neighbors or the statistical neighbors relating to each point to calculate the surface. It is similar to IDW in the sense that IDW also uses neighbors, but there's a threshold that you can apply. And as you can see, natural neighbor does look slightly different to IDW. Then you can tra try, uh, for example, Turbo to Raster. Now, this is slightly different to the previous ones because you can actually use polylines as well. So in this case, we're going to use the iso heights, the polylines. Again, you must specify the height value, the elevation value that's going to be used to interpolate to the raster. Here's the output cell size. Again, this raster is projected into a planar projection. So this is in meters. So each cell is 400 by 400 meters. There are a couple of other things you can do as well. But uh, you can normally just accept the defaults. So you say OK. 
and the tool is going to run. With all the interpolation methods you can expect a slightly different output that is based on the mathematical function that is running in the background creating these interpolation outputs and also on the other parameters that you can control for example cell size and projection so just to visually show you this is the Topo Terrestre using contralines this is the natural neighbor and then we have the IDW so as you can see clearly slightly different outputs not too much though the overall terrain is represented in the same manner and you will decide which the best interpolation method is based on your input data set and the ultimate goal that you want to achieve. I just want to stress that you really need to work in a projected or planar projected file in meters otherwise these values that actually give you the height classes won't be intuitive, they'll be giving in degrees so if you want to actually understand what you're doing and for any kind of further analysis you really must work in a projected or planar projected file.